While there is nothing wrong with this function that you see right now in the screen, the question is if we can do better. In this video, we're going to refactor this if and else clauses to see if we can do a bit better to make our code cleaner and more readable to human. All right, let's get it started. The first and the most important part of this is that to look if we have any tests. I already have installed dependencies tests library for the Dart packages. By the way, I'm using zap.run, which you will later get a link to this project and you can take a look at that yourself and give it a try. So we have a test folder and the main test.folder. So I already grouped a get holiday function, which is our function here. All right, what we will do, we're going to start writing a test. I will write a quick test and I'll get back to you. All right. Let's see what we've done. So all the tests are passing right now. Let's take a look at the first test that we've written. So in my fire test function, I imported the example and I named it as um, original. So I just can call this function that I have. I already have a user object. Let's take a look at that. The user object is just very simple, a class that has a nullable edge as one of the parameters. So in this case, I just uh, constructed a user named Majid, which does not have any edge and the edge is null. So I'm expecting that in this logic, based on what we see here, if the edge is null, then user does not have edge should be the result. And that is the case. So I'm expecting that. I run the test and now we see the tests are passing. So this is good. I'm just gonna move forward and for all of those logic, for the rest of the logic that is in this example, let's quickly review. If the edge is more than 18, more than 62, more than 16, and so on. So we have, we need four more type of tests to, to, to make sure what we are actually doing is going to be valid later after refactoring. So I'm just going to go quickly and write all the other tests as we've done here. In fact, I'm just gonna copy and paste this and make sure that we have a correct uh, test or passing test. All right, I'm back. So I've written four or five types of tests to make sure all the values are tested. So it seems everything is now passed. So that's good. I have a set, a solid set of user uh, or test, which I can relay on. Let's move on and go to start refactoring this. Uh, before I start uh, doing that, I said, uh, I have to mention that actually writing this test is also giving me a good, uh, understanding of what's going on in this uh, function. So let's get it started. So I'm just going to go under library now and start uh, creating a file named refactored. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually copy and paste the entire function. We're going to use a technique named guard clauses. And that typically means you're going to protect your, you know, happy path or the function or the logic that you have with some logic that will uh, avoid passing the rest of the logic if it's not going to pass. So in this case means, so look at this right now. Let me give you an example. In this case, we're saying actually user.edge is not null. We're, okay, if that's the case, we're going to go there. But if it's null, we're going to go there, right? But what if, we just turn this if, and if we do that, we're going to get rid of this else statement. What does it mean? So 
In fact, when I say guarding, that means I can actually bring up this guard all the way here. And I can just say, if user is null, well, this is, a, this is something that I don't want to go forward. I just say return, like typically return this value, right? So as simple as that. I mean, in many cases, you may want to um, through exceptions or errors, but in this case, I'm just going to return well this value. So what it means now is I can go ahead and get rid of this if and else. And that by itself means, well, if an edge is null, the rest of the logic, you don't really care what is going on. All right, that's good. So this is a baby step that we've done so far. And that, this is a technique that we call it guard clauses. So now we've done that, let's actually test it out. I'm just going to go to my test and import the refactored file. And I name it refactor. So I'm just going to go to my uh, null test, this one. And I will actually use, uh, I will just copy this and use a refactored, uh, refactored. All right. All right. Now I'm just going to go and add another expect, which I say now my refactor one should do the same. So let's give it a try, see if it's actually working. Voila, all the tests are passing right now. That means we're doing our refactoring correctly. So my uh, suggestion to you, always take a baby step in refactoring process. Just go ahead and do this. And if you are doing in some kind of like, uh, uh, version control, save or commit, or make sure you are always have your refactored function in a working uh, condition. Another thing that I see right now we can refactor right now is, well, we're actually having a result variable here. At the end, we return one, you know, variable, which, well, I think in this case, we can actually get rid of that. And all of these results can have return. Now we make this a bit more simpler to read. Okay, so another thing is, can we do the same things that we've done with the first one and like turn this if and else to something else? If you look at this is right now, this is another example we're gonna do. It says, well, if user.edge more than 18, then do this, otherwise do this, which means if I just turn this to like the opposite, say below and copy this, remove this and bring this after, that means, take a look at that. If below 18, then come to this, otherwise go to this. You can, you can in fact do the same for 16 and say, well, if more than 62 this, uh, well, there is no need to say else, I can actually say, well, if below 18 go to this, is more than 62 go to this, and otherwise go just return that one. This is going to be nice right now. So look at this logic. It's much simpler to read. I can go and fix my test quickly, see if, if I've done everything correctly. Just gonna go quickly and copy and paste my refactor to all of this test all right now what i've done i've done the exact same thing that we've done with the first test with the rest of that just same thing and i'm expecting the same result let's just gonna see if the test passes voila all the tests are passing so we are doing something correctly here that's very nice. Let's move on and go to our refactor. Can we do this a bit better? If you look at this, we still have one else. And that means maybe we can do, there is nothing wrong to have an else here. However, maybe we can simplify that. If you look at this right now, it says if it's below 18, that means technically if I actually turn this to below 16, that's going to be logic. 
and that is going to be same as this one. All right, so it's below 16. Well, user has an illegal edge. So if otherwise below 18, more than 16, but plus 16, it will be needs a requiring or approval. So if you look at this, if I actually now move this part to higher, that means if go below 16, that's the case. If go below 18, that is the case. And if more than 62, that is the case. Otherwise, that is the case. We just refactor our function, all that indented code and nested if and else to a simple, more readable for uh, if that you can see here. Now it's time to see if the tests are also passing. Voila, all the tests are uh, now, as you see, all tests passed. So fantastic. This is a technique that named guard clause, uh, clauses, and you can use to simplify your if and else statement. And technically means you can bring up some of your if uh, to guard your, the rest of your logic on top of the function and remove some of these indented code or nested if and else. I hope you liked it. See you in the next video.